Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and macOS 14 or macOS Sonoma Beta 1 is out to developers. This particular update brings some nice features and changes and in this update I'm going to cover just those things that are not across different platforms. So in iOS 17 and iPadOS 17 there's changes to messages and many other things. Be sure to check out those videos. I'm going to cover macOS specific updates. And as you can see with the beta it was 5.82 gigabytes. That's on the M2 MacBook Air 13 inch. And let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to the Apple, go to about this Mac, and we'll click on Sonoma 14, and you'll see the build number is 23A5257Q. And this update, like I said, brings some nice changes. However, you won't be able to install this update if you're on older Macs, as they've changed some of the specs. So the supported devices with macOS Sonoma is iMac 2019 and later, Mac Pro 2019 and later, iMac Pro, Mac Studio 2022 and later, MacBook Air 2018 and later, Mac Mini 2018 and later, and MacBook Pro 2018 and later. Anything before that will not support macOS 14 Sonoma. Now, this particular update has some new wallpapers and screensavers. You can see this one here. This is the Sonoma screensaver or wallpaper. And if we go into our settings, we'll go down here and then go to wallpaper. You'll see some new ones and we have the option to switch between automatic, light, and dark. And you can see this is the stock one. However, the stock one isn't that great as we have a bunch of landscapes, cityscapes, underwater, earth, and basically things that we have on Apple TV. We also have the new MacBook 15 inch for MacBook Air. So we can switch between that, which I really like this one. We have radial green, radial purple, yellow, and then some of our older ones. If we go up here and maybe select Grand Canyon, I've already downloaded it and you can see it here. So if I move this out of the way, you can see this. And if I lock my screen, it sort of animates. Now it's locked. If I unlock, it then stops. So let me do that one more time. You'll see here that it's still unlock, and then it sort of animates and then comes to a stop. That's true for any of those updates here. So maybe we have, I think I downloaded another one. I think Hawaii, let's click on that. Now the resolution of this one isn't great. Maybe I need to redownload it, but let's go ahead and lock. And you'll see it starts to move. If I use Touch ID or my password, it unlocks and comes to a stop. So I think this is a really nice update. However, the lock screen does remind me a bit of Windows. So if we go back, it's sort of an animated version of Windows. It looks very, very familiar as far as that goes. Now also one other thing to note is at the top of settings, we actually have back and forward arrows. It's a really simple change, but something that's definitely welcome. Now something else you can do in macOS Sonoma is if we bring over our widgets, you'll see what's new is we can place widgets anywhere we want. I can grab this widget right from the widget view here. and Maybe I wanna put that one here. If I go to edit widgets, maybe I want the weather widget here. I can just grab that, place it on the desktop and put it wherever I'd like. I can snap it but it auto aligns here as well. Maybe I wanna put it in the middle, I can do that and go back and maybe align it. So you can place it wherever you'd like, use any of the widgets that are contained there. Within widgets, you'll see different widgets that are actually available on my iPhone, but aren't installed on my Mac. This works through continuity and you can see things such as car status or different apps, Ring for example, or maybe something else with shortcuts or Pinterest or anything else you have on here. You'll be able to use those widgets and then they'll update even though you don't have them installed. They'll update on your Mac even though the app is not technically installed on your Mac just because you have it on your iPhone. So this works pretty seamlessly and it's already working as you would expect. Now another new feature has to do with FaceTime or video conferencing calls. So let's go into that. And as you can see, this is a FaceTime call. Now, if you have a device that supports continuity camera up here in the upper right, you'll have some new options to help you better center where you are within that camera. Also, you have different controls for things such as portrait. You can adjust the blur in the background. The same is true with studio light. And there's an all new reaction section. So this is reactions like you have on iMessage. So we'll click love, then we can give a thumbs up. And supposedly this will work with gestures as well. So if I give two thumbs up, it should do that and recognize it when you're on a call and give that thumbs up sign. We also have some party balloons here. 
They go in front and behind me, and then also fireworks and more. So there's fireworks. We have a little light show. We have a celebration. We even have storm or rain or storm clouds. And thumbs down as well. So you've got all of these built in if you want to use them. There's also some conferencing modes if you're within a call that will help you overlay things over information you're presenting. Let's see if I can get that to work by conference calling myself. And now I'm on a FaceTime call with myself on a different phone. So let me go ahead and set this down and show you what this will look like. So we'll just point it at the ceiling here for now. And if we click on my own image here, we now have some new options. So of course we have portrait mode, but in the upper right, if we click on the FaceTime icon, we not only have that, but we also have the option to share your window or your screen. So I'll share my screen and we can now have a presenter overlay with small or large, which means I'll be in front of it. So if we click share screen and then we click small, you'll see that I'm down here in the bottom left. And then also if I click large, you'll see I'm actually over the top of it here in my display sharing my screen. And then if I go over to my screen here, I now have some options in the upper left that show that I'm sharing the screen and then we should be able to easily share different things. So if I go into the app store, you'll see we're sharing and then we have the option to close the window, minimize it, enter full screen, tile to the left, to the right, or move it to my iPad that's nearby as well or remove it from the FaceTime share. So we have all of those options built in and it makes it very, very simple to use. Now, if we go back to FaceTime here, let's go back in and we'll turn this off with the presenter overlay. And that's just some new modes. You also have those reactions, like I said. So if I give a thumbs up, it should recognize that. Apparently it doesn't, but maybe in future collaboration updates it will. Maybe that's just part of beta one not working properly. So that should give you an idea of how that works with that overlay and more. And if you had content, of course, around the room, you could share that. So it's really nice that they've added it. I don't know that I'll use it that much, but we have that option now. Now, if we go into Safari, Safari gets some updates as far as overall speed. Let's go to apple.com. We'll just go to the Mac section here. And if we go to Safari and go to settings, under settings, we have new profiles. We can set up a profile for work or home and then have it start as maybe a favorite page or any one of your different maybe bookmarks or a new page, an empty page or same page. You can have profiles for just about anything you want and it even has extensions that are managed separately. You don't have to use these, but if you want to use them, they're available. Additionally, there's some updates that allow you to use this as a web app. So if we want to maybe save this web page, we can click add to doc from our file menu and we can name it. And now we can open it as a separate experience where it's in its own window and it's specific to whatever you've saved. You can do this on any website you regularly visit if you want to do that, or you could just get rid of it altogether and it acts as its own separate app. We also have privacy updates that add for a more secure private browsing experience. So if we go to new private window, you'll see here it says Safari is designed with privacy in mind by preventing trackers by default. Now, what the new experience does is even lock the overall web page. So maybe you left the web page, it locks it, it stops any trackers or anything from accessing your data. So if you want to use private browsing, that's available. Now, additionally, there's updates to a new game mode. Now, this is specific to Apple Silicon Macs and also specific to certain apps. So some apps will now allow you to actually run them in a game mode that optimizes latency. So it gives priority to the CPU and GPU of the Mac and lowers the usage for background tasks to reduce that latency. Additionally, there's a new option in here. If we go into our apps, we'll go out, go over to other here, you'll see we have a new screen sharing icon. If we open that up, you can set up screen sharing connections and add different host names and more. So you can set that up here with an all new icon for that just makes it a little bit easier. There's a couple other updates here as well. One of them has to do with mail and this one's pretty simple. If you have travel related emails, they'll be at the top of your search results as your trip dates approach. So that's something that wasn't really mentioned anywhere else by Apple. Also, you have the option for voice dictation and using the keyboard together, just like you did on iOS with iOS 16. 
So if you want to use voice dictation, we'll go into notes. And just like iOS 16 and now iOS 17, we can actually use voice dictation and type at the same time. Let me show you. This is voice dictation on macOS Sonoma. Now I'm typing with the keyboard. Now I can continue with my voice. And so you see that works pretty seamlessly, very fast, and quite well. And so that's everything in macOS Sonoma that's not included in iOS 17 or iPadOS 17. So there are other updates here as well with things such as messages, Again, different applications in that I showed in the other updates. So music gets a little change, notes get some updates with PDF and more. Now, if you found anything more I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And I'll link the main macOS Sonoma wallpaper in the description if I can find it. I do like the other ones, the landscape ones much better, but I'll link this one in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Let me know what you think of macOS Sonoma in the comments below, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.